In this video, we're going to be talking about the three biggest mistakes a home buyer makes when they're buying their next home. Don't forget the bonus that we will also talk about bridge loans. That's right. Hey, it's Jeff Chubb. I'm a recovering investment banker turned real estate agent. I've sold more than a thousand houses and I'm here with... Sammy Leopolis, and I'm one of the top 300 loan officers in the United States, and I work for a guaranteed rate. Sammy, real quick. First, I think it makes the most sense to quickly go over what is a move-up buyer. Yeah, so a move-up buyer is someone that currently owns a home and is looking to buy a new home that would be a larger in price. As opposed to a move-down buyer, which is somebody known as downsizing. That's correct. All right, on to the top three mistakes. The first mistake is not preparing your house to be ready to sell. Jeff, this is really your world, so I'm going to let you run from here. 100% my world, right? And it's so important. There can be different levels of preparing your house for sale as well. Oftentimes, we're going to bring in a stager and they're going to do a home consultation and go over some tricks on how to better present the house and maybe some improvements that could be done in order to help maximize a sales price. Improvements and staging. Uh, let's dive into that a little bit more. So when we refer to staging, uh, we're not talking about moving out all of your furniture and bringing in new furniture. We're talking about maybe moving some furniture around or maybe removing some furniture from a room altogether. And what is often the most important thing that you can do, which is decluttering. You know, people buy space. So the bigger you can make a space feel, then ultimately the more that they're going to be willing to pay for that space. I guess that's why it's been proven that a staged house sells faster and for more money. But staging doesn't just end there. It also has to do with some improvements. Maybe it's a uh, painting to bring the property to a more neutral color tone. Uh, or I've seen sellers install granite countertops and swap out the hardware on the cabinet doors, uh, paint kitchen cabinet doors. It's really a case by case basis and comes down to what a seller is willing to do and also what makes sense from a financial standpoint of uh, return on investment. Okay, so that is staging, but you mentioned multiple levels of preparation. Uh, what do you mean by that? Well, bringing out the stager and knowing what needs to be done, consider that level one. Having the improvements done that a seller is willing to do, we could call that level two of the preparedness scale, if you will. And then the highest level is having everything staged and then actually having the professional photographer coming out and getting all of those marketing materials. So this way, when that seller finds the next house that they want to buy, then we can ultimately go on the market immediately without really losing any time. And for what I've seen, this is a huge advantage in the offer situation. And I've seen you sell this hard to prospective sellers. Yes, it makes a huge difference when you can tell a seller that we are 100% prepared to go on market and we're going to have that buyer's house on the market within 24 hours of them accepting our offer. The second biggest mistake a seller makes is not having an estimate of the net proceeds that they're going to walk away with once their house sells. I see people get in trouble with this all the time. They have the sales numbers in their head and don't factor in closing costs or they miscalculate how much money they'll currently owe on their mortgage. Sammy, let's back up a real quick second. Tell us why is this so important from your end? Well, the net proceeds of the home sales often goes towards the down payment. Sometimes it's a part of the down payment, part of improvements, but generally the proceeds are rolled into the next purchase. So if they go overly aggressive on the amount that they will have on the new house and have me work off of these high numbers, then that means I'm qualifying them for a number that they may not be able to obtain. Or afford, right? I mean, that's, you know. Okay. And, and that could cause a whole bunch of headaches, right? And problems for just a lot of people. Yeah. At this point, you're talking about issues, uh, not only for the move up client, but also for the seller of the house that they are buying. And sometimes even for the seller of the house that your seller is buying. And the people that are buying their house, right? I mean, it's amazing how quickly the chain can build and how many people can quickly become affected, uh, especially if there's some bad information somewhere in that value chain. Yeah, talk to me about the proper way to go about this. Yeah, you want to meet with your real estate agent. Go over the marketability of your property. It doesn't matter if you're a move-up buyer or just a regular seller. If an agent isn't providing you with a net sale proceeds breakdown, then you should run, point blank. This is negligence from them not doing their job or just an experience and a lack of knowledge. You fell off the tracks here, Jeff. Yeah. Sorry about that. Uh, that net sale proceeds sheet needs to be broken down with an expected sales price, a rosy sales price, and a worst case scenario sales price. Yeah, 100%. The numbers that move, the move up buyer needs to go on are the worst case scenario sales price. Uh, Jeff, can you give me an example of some of the costs that would be backed out of the sales price? Of course. Uh, things like transfer tax, uh, real estate fees, attorney fees, inspections. And I'll even throw in a couple hundred dollars for miscellaneous fees like courier fees or payoff fees, things of that nature. It's important to know that uh, it isn't exact, but it provides a great estimate. Uh, let's talk must-know contingency clauses for move-up buyers. Well, you've got two. You have the home sale contingency, and then you have the suitable housing clause. Mm -hmm. Yep. 
Uh, let's talk about the suitable housing clause first, because that's basically became the only chance you have when you were able to get an offer with a home sale contingency accepted during the peak of the market. Yeah, it was crazy times. <laughs> So what exactly is a suitable uh, housing class? The best way that I can explain it is that it's like a home buying contingency for the seller of a property, if that makes sense. A home buyer contingency, uh, way to confuse everybody. You're going to have to unpack that one, please. All right, fair enough. Let's say I'm a seller and I'm looking to sell my house at 123 Main Street. I'm gonna put my house on the market in this crazed market. Buyers would line up and just beg me to accept one of their offers. Now, a suitable housing clause is a contingency in the accepted offer that I accept with my buyer that will only sell my house at 123 Main Street to the buyer once I've found and gotten an offer accepted and am able to close on the house that is suitable for my needs. That pretty much sums it up. And buyers were desperate, so they were willing to accept any and all conditions and offers to get a house. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about the pros and cons of this. Well, the pros for the buyer is that they lock up a house at today's pricing. Cons is that they could be waiting for a little while. Pros for the sellers that it allows them to go put offers in on a house and relate to a seller's fear about a home sale contingency. This thereby increases the likelihood of the seller actually choosing their offer. And in my one, two, three Main Street scenario, it's kind of like, well, me having my cake and really ultimately eating it too. Sammy, talk to me a little bit about what a home sale contingency is and why it's so important. Yeah, a uh, home sale contingency is a clause included in the contract that means the sale of the buyer's current home must be completed before the purchase of the new home before it can proceed. Uh, to say it in any other way, the buyer's ability to purchase a new home is contingent upon the successful sale of their existing home. What this does, it, it transfers a lot of the risk from a buyer onto the seller of these move up buyers. Smart sellers, they're gonna put certain conditions in regards to the sales price as well as some time constraints here. Uh, but it is ultimately a win-win. Unless a buyer has been pre-qualified, and I should really say approved, not pre-approved, but approved. Actually approved. Yeah. Underwriting is approved. <laughs> Having a file that's gone through underwriting and they never write an offer on a house that is not contingent upon the sale of that house. That, or if they have a backup plan, maybe that consists of having a pile of cash or knowing someone with a pile of cash that you can borrow for, you know, for a short period of time. Uh, and now, time for that bonus section, right? Sammy, you asked for this one, so I'm just going to let you take this one away. Yeah, Bridge Loans um, had a great heyday back in the run-up of 2007, but that is a product that has become a lot less common and is very expensive. Okay, so they're not the end-all that they used to be. I mean, they, these things used to be gold to everybody. Yeah, the closing costs are just drastically more expensive, and you'll need to refinance out of that bridge loan, which will add an additional cost on top of that. Talk to me about actually qualifying for these bridge loans. What does that look like today? Yeah, every investor is um, has different guidelines. Some of them have higher reserve requirements, while others may have more strict debt ratio requirements. Um, these are ultimately the challenges of bridge loans and why a lot of the times they just don't work and they don't make sense. And, and real quick, I, I think let's say what a bridge loan is, right? It's where essentially you take some of the equity of your house that you currently own, you take some of that equity to use as the down payment in order to buy that second house that you're going to be moving into. Is that correct. a good way to sum it up? That's correct. Yep. Well, Sammy, I, I think we did it. These are the three biggest mistakes that a move up buyer makes. And if you own a home and are curious as to how much your home is worth, then go to chtvalue.com. And if you're buying a home, then Sammy, well, he can help you. He works for the number two lender in the country and is one of their top 10 mortgage brokers. If you're thinking about making a move, then be sure to reach out to this guy. He's one of the top agents in the state. They'll take great care of you. All of our contact information, it's in the description below. You can also reach out to us at youtuberealestateagent.com. So let us know if you have any questions, and until next time.